Oh my gosh. Loyalty and trust in the workplace is so tough to come by these days. And honestly, as a business owner, it starts with you. With you instilling and creating that work environment that curates ironclad trust. Yeah, I know you're going, what is that? Most of us think that trust only needs to be from the upper management, but really it involves your employees and your clients or your customers. If you currently don't have ironclad trust in your business or you want a better balance in your work environment with all your moving pieces, I highly suggest you stick around and figure out how to stretch your bandwidth to tackle this and why it will pay off for you in the end. Wherever you're listening and watching from, thank you so much. We are not a show without you. You are live with us on the Aaron Strayer Show, where we are all about promoting, cultivating, and expanding amazing female entrepreneurs that are out in the world doing things just a little bit differently. We talk about hot topics like, are our employees happy? Is our business profitable? And pain points, right? And we give you the workarounds to, to those challenges that we as female entrepreneurs face every single day. I'm your host, Aaron Strayer, and recovering corporates and entrepreneurs hire me to get them business beyond the basics because most are indecisive, they're held hostage by their own fear, and quite frankly, they've settled for average C+. Plus vanilla. So I help them keep on track by setting attainable goals, plugging gaping holes in their businesses and personal lives and taking their dreams to reality. And bottom line, I provide peak performance scaling strategies for growth-minded entrepreneurs so that you and your business get the attention to detail it deserves and you start making money in your business. You can find me at Aaron Strayer. Dot com. However, this show is never, ever, 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 ever about me. It is always about our amazing female experts that join us on this platform. And today is no exception. It is a second time around for this amazing guest that's going to be with us today. Fran Tone is a strategic advisor. She's an attorney and she's a three-time best-selling author. She's also a top certified skiing instructor, trainer, certified dive master, and high performance athlete. She's also been given awards on the podium, finishing in stand up paddle boarding and surfing. Heck yeah, this lady's amazing. And she's got some keys for business and life success that she learned from the ski slope. Mm. Yeah, it's the same thing that gives her success flying down the back diamond slopes. Ooh, I can't wait for you to once again meet my good friend, dear friend, and guest today, Fran Oh my God, you make me, you just make me sound like a rock star. Wow. You are a rock star. <laughs> Thanks. But, you know, so are you, so is everybody else. And let me tell you, <laughs> flying down black diamonds, that's where you learn a lot about fear and business and life. And it's so exciting. And I love it that I can learn so much while I'm having so much fun. Oh my gosh. You know, and um, for those people that don't ski, what is a black diamond? Okay. So ski resorts uh, are rated. Yeah. Green circle is the beginners. So if you're ever a beginner, you want to hang out in the green circles. When you become an intermediate, you go to the blue squares. A black diamond is the toughest part of that mountain. And some places have double black diamond, which means that's experts only. So mm. I tend to hang out in the blacks and double black diamonds. <laughs> Which, by the way, you have to be an extremely skilled skier to ski a black diamond, let alone a double black. Believe me, I've wiped out on more than one and never returned. So, <laughs> But you know what? Let me tell you this. I, no matter how good you are, it doesn't mean that we don't experience the same ex feels, feel, feelings that people feel in business and life, fear, anxiety, yeah. those things, you know, even there. But that's what I'm telling you. What I experience on the ski slopes, I take those lessons and I take it into business. And it's amazing how it works so well. You know, that's really interesting that you say that because, um, you know, my experience on the Black Diamond is that I wiped out, right? <laughs> <laughs> But then what was the recovery period looking like, right? What, how right. did I take that lesson and apply it mm -hmm. to go forward and pick up all of the garage sale items that were on the ski slope after I wiped out, right? Like my hat, my mittens, my car keys, and <laughs> my hotel room key. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, just a string of things at the garage sale down the down the mountain, right? Um, how do we? How do we? Like, it just seems like it's in so imperative to take those lessons and plug them in. And I know that one of the things that, you know, we talked about before was the work-life balance. And that was so, you guys seriously go back and find Fran, Fran in our video vault and watch that because it's so worth your time. Um, but one of the other things that you really imply, apply in your business, in your coaching with your clients is trust. And um, when you brought that topic forward for today, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, ironclad trust. It's so professional firms and service-based businesses hire me to leverage lucrative leadership because most are struggling to attract, retain, and engage top talent and top customers. Yeah. And so I ignite kind of like a real innovative team engagement, maximize that human capital, and, yeah. and as a result, it increases revenues. So basically, I teach people to become emotionally intelligent leaders so they become more effective in their business and their lives. Yeah. Because let's face it, and I'm getting to trust here really quickly because some businesses know about emotional intelligent leadership and are using some of the tools and they have some impact. Many know about emotional intelligence, but they have no tools. Yeah. You know, they, like they know it's there, but they're like, what, what do I do with this? Right. And most haven't even considered that emotional intelligence is a critical component for developing trust, not only within the business owner, but with the team members, with their employees, with their customers, and even in their personal lives, with their spouses and their friends and their children, right? Yeah. It, and the basis of everything is trust. And, and here's why. Think about this. If I told you, hey, look, there's a person over there. I want you to trust them. What would you say? Like, Why? Why? I don't why? know this person. Yeah. Why? I, why would I trust this person? And well, isn't that- Because Fran said. Yeah. Right, just because Fran said. I know. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But- that's what every business is trying to do to everybody else out there. They're yeah. saying, I know you don't know me, but just trust me. Come yeah. work with me. Come be my client. I'll take care of you. Why should anybody trust you? Just like I, you wouldn't trust somebody. I point, go, oh, trust that person. You wouldn't trust that person. Right. So how can you, what do you have to do to be that person when you say, trust me? Come to me. I can help you. What is it you have to do? What do you have to show? Yeah. You can't just say, trust me, that doesn't work. And you can tell your backstory and all that kind of stuff, you know, that, that failure to success, the mess to success kind of story. Yeah. And people might resonate with some of those stories, but what, what triggers that person to say, you i'm going to trust what is it about you that you need to show and i'm telling you it's you have to show throughout that you are so trustworthy not because you said so not because you have a backstory it's what is it that you're doing Dude, how are you showing up yeah right yeah and and that, all the time, right? Like, right, all like, the time. Like back when we were kids, do the right thing even when nobody's watching. Exactly, right. right? And so, yeah. what do you have to do? And and I think that sometimes businesses get caught up in the minutia, sure. the how tos, the what to dos, and all that, and they forget that this is the most important component of everything else. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so well, so. Back when I was training to become a fully certified ski instructor, I had to do a lot of things on the hill that were really scary. And so, and this is where I really learned some key components about trust, because you have to trust yourself. So, you know, as a ski instructor, as a fully certified ski instructor, I have to be good enough to teach anybody on the mountain, anywhere on the mountain. Mm -hmm. So it means I have to be able to trust myself to be able to exude enough trust so that the student or uh, instructor I'm training trusts me when I say, you got this, they believe it, mm -hmm. right? So one time um, I, I'm out with a couple of my friends and they take me to this area and I had to climb down dirt to yeah. get on this ledge of dirt and the snow had melted on this ledge and right at the edge of the ledge, <laughs> there's this little bit of snow. Uh -huh. And one of my friends says, okay, we're gonna go down this and he just, goes in and he's gone. He's a, he is a full certified instructor at this point. I'm training to be one. 
And so I put my skis on, on the little patch of snow, and I'm standing there. And now the front of my skis is out on this ledge. There's air below my skis. I looked down, and the slope looked icy to me, and it looked like a 90-degree pitch. It wasn't 90 degrees. It was probably more like 60 degrees, which is really steep. But it, 60 degrees looks like 90 when you're standing. Right, 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 right. Yeah, <laughs> like it looks like a lot worse. <laughs> it, it does, right. And then all of a sudden I realized one ski is actually on a rock. It's not even on snow. And the other ski is on snow. And all of a sudden I experienced that fear that yeah. gripping fear. And my brain is going, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. My friends are trying to kill me, I'm going to die. <laughs> if, if I stand here, I'm going to die because I cannot move. If I go, I'm going to die. I mean, it's all that's going on in my head. Yeah, I'm going yeah. To die. I'm going to die. And I, that moment, fear had gripped me. And I didn't die, because I'm here today. <laughs> right, 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 thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. So what I did is after going through, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And I realized I cannot stay here. And there was no way back out. I couldn't go back up the way I came. Yeah. It was even more treacherous. I probably would have died had I done that. So I had to go. And then I just took a couple of deep breaths. And I said, wait a second. I have done harder things than this in my training. And I looked at the slope and I said, it looks icy, but what I can't do is slide in because I got one ski on a rock and it'll catch me and then I will sure. tumble. So I can't do that. I'm going to have to hop in. Well, if I hop in on this slope, I'm not going to go much faster than if I slipped in. So the speed is about the same if I didn't have a ski on the rock. And then I'm thinking, it's icy. I said, but you know, I've got these edges on my skis that are really sharp. And if I just did a pivot, which I'm really good at doing this pivot, which I can do easily on ice, and I grip, grip that edge with the ice just a little tiny bit, I would get a little tiny bit of speed control. It may not be a lot, but a little bit. I'm like, okay, I get something. And I only have to do this for about 20 feet. And I could just slide straight down for 20 feet because then there's snow down there. And when I get on the snow, I know what to do. Yeah. And I can then reduce my speed slowly, not panic, just take my time and do what I know what I, I, I could do. So... I sat there and went, all right, I've got the skills to do this. I really do. And I'm not going to die. And then I went, all right, here's my tactics. I'm going to make a little hop into that 90 degree slope, let my skis land, edge as best I can, slide for 20 feet. And when I get to the snow, I'm going to take care of business at that point. And that's what I did. And it worked. And it worked. So here's what I had to do, though, right? And this is what I want to teach everybody today is how do you do that when you're a grip like that is yeah, what I realized. What I realized was, is that my facts that I had, I'm going to die. My thought was incorrect. It was wrong. It was influenced by this fear that I was feeling. And it was a distortion of my skills. It made me forget I had skills. It made me forget that I am capable. It made me forget all the real facts that I'm skilled, I've been training, I know how to do this. I know exactly what to do. The fact that I came up with my tactics told me I knew what to do. But the thought idea in my head, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, was was just a false fact. I want to stop you for a second because what you said landed so hard for me where you said fear is a distortion of my skills. Yeah. That is such a true statement and it stops people in their tracks all mm -hmm. the time. And, you know, really at the end of the day, it is or isn't, you know, if we're going to loop it into this trust factor, right? Like the fear to form that trust in your in your, as an owner of your company, in your team, in your environment, whatever, that fear, oh, they're not going to like me if I got to get a little tough here. Oh, they're not going to like me yeah. if I tell them for the 16th time in a row that they were late today. Oh my gosh. Right. Like, mm, but I really need them and I like them, yeah. but I don't want them to, I want them to show up. And so I'm scared. Right. Or whatever, or I need to make that investment. And I know yeah. if I make that investment that, that investment is going to be tenfold in less than 30 days, but I'm really scared to make that investment. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, the fear, like instead of trusting your skill set and your knowledge and your education and your training, like you were saying, like if I only trusted, I wouldn't have stood there for that many minutes, like just all your muscles and knots, right? Like, and just. Right. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, does the thought come first or the emotion? And they happen so close together yeah. that we don't realize that um, that the emotion is feeding that first thought. It's actually the thought I'm going to die. And then <gasps> you freeze yeah. up and then you can't get past that thought. And and it's having these distortions like I mean, people have that all the time. You know, like, for instance, um, if I tell my employee that what they did was not satisfactory they're going to quit sure well that's a distortion thought and all of a sudden you come up with all these emotions like oh well then i can't do that because i'm afraid and i need them and you come up with all these other thoughts that aren't even real because you've right. made something up in your head like they're going to quit but you don't know they're going to quit you know all you have to do is go through that process and instead eliminate those distortions so once I eliminated, like in my case, the distortion, I'm not going to die. That was yeah. the distorted fact, a distorted idea in my head. Once I realized, no, I'm not going to die. Now, could it be hard? Yeah, it might be hard. But once I got rid of that, I kind of went, wait a second. All the other data I have is I can do this. Yeah. You know, and and it's what happens is if you let that real negative emotion rule you because you haven't been able to identify it and manage it well which is what emotional intelligence is about is that it clouds your judgment mm. you know because emotions mm. are part of our nature it's part of rational thought when you eliminate emotions completely like suppress them sure. actually that has big it's a there's a big price to be paid it affects you physiologically spiritually mentally and in the long run it actually hurts you True so, story. right. And a lot, how many times do you know people, they just keep suppressing right. the emotion because Pushing they're like, people, yeah. I, I can't have fear. You know, right. I can't, I can't experience this. Well, there's a reason for those emotions, but you have to be able to see it and manage it well so that you can use that to your advantage. That fear that I had that I was going to die once I kind of rolled it back and went, okay, I'm not going to die. But the fear that was triggered allowed me to say, okay, what do I need to do? It gave me motivation yeah. to take that next step because I managed it. Yeah. Right. And people just don't know how to manage that. They just operate as if I'm going to die and then they don't do anything. Yeah. Is there an easy way? Like we've been dropping this word emotional intelligence and mm -hmm. I know it's it's coming up there. I wouldn't really call it a buzzword yet, um, yeah. but it is becoming more and more out there. Um, in a nutshell, let's tell the people what emotional intelligence is because we both okay. love it. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, so emotional intelligence is uh, often referred as EQ or EI, is how well you can identify, be self-aware, identify your emotions and manage your own emotions so that you can then identify and manage other people's emotions as well. And by having a high level of emotional intelligence, you start developing amazing leadership skills so that you do know how to speak to that employee without causing them to quit on you, your yeah. valuable employee. You do know how to engage with all of your team, your employees, your spouses, your customers in such a way that it instills this ironclad trust in you. Mm -hmm. And when you are, when you have a high level of emotional intelligence and there's like tons and tons of factors, you know, it involves basically what we call the soft skills, your ability to communicate, your ability to resolve conflict, decision-making. Um, there's just empathy. A lot of people think, Right, you know, because of so much has been out there, as soon as they hear emotional intelligence, it's like, oh, it's empath empathy. Like, well, that's only one of a multitude. <laughs> right. You definitely yeah. need it, you know. And, you know, like we were talking about beforehand, uh, th that emotional assessment tests kind of yeah. score you on all these different factors. And the one that I use that I'm certified in has 15 subcategories. There are competencies that it scores. 
And oftentimes, you know, we think assertiveness is a good thing to have because a lot of times people, when they aren't assertive, they don't get what they need in their business mm -hmm. or in their life. But, um, and I, I bring this up because people always think, you know, empathy, empathy, empathy. Well, yeah. if you have a lot of empathy and not enough assertiveness, a low in assertiveness, people are going to take advantage of you of because course. you won't speak up for yourself. Of course. But, but you always feel for everybody else and you won't speak up for yourself. So that's not having a lot of empathy by itself is not necessarily a good thing. Now, the flip side is if you've got a lot of um, assertiveness and low empathy, well, that kind of sounds like a bully, right? Right. <laughs> they just push and get everything they want, but they don't care what it does to anybody else. Yeah. So it's not just one component. Things have to kind of balance out. And yeah. so, you know, and that's what emotional intelligence is about. And emotionally intelligent leadership is about people who are working on elevating all of those competencies so mm -hmm. that they can be more effective with themselves and with others. And you know what's cool about this is when somebody's really good at this, really good at their emotional intelligence, it creates a halo effect. Ooh. So and does that sound cool? Like you mm -hmm. get a halo over your head. I know. And what it does is um, our brains, when we see people, we our brains just intuitively see people who are good at emotional intelligence. And it's not a conscious thought. It's this subconscious thought that we have. When people are really good at that, the brain goes, oh, they must be good at everything else they do. Mm. And you just acquire that halo effect. And that takes us to ironclad trust because it's not about what you say. It's not about what you do. And this is what a quote from Maya Angelou, right? Emotional intelligence allows you to help people feel the way you want them to feel. It triggers that emotion in them. And when they see you're able to manage your own and help identify theirs, that you read their emotions well. So when you speak to them and approach them, it's consistent with how they're feeling. Yeah. It makes them feel like you care because you, you have to care for this to work. It makes them feel like you care. Now they want to work with you. Mm. You start developing that ironclad trust really early on. Yeah. But if you have low emotional intelligence, you never get that connection. It's yeah. so true. And and that is such a missing link, missing piece, gaping hole in so many people's businesses is yeah. that they miss that emotional intelligence part that actually is the mm -hmm. relationship forming part. It's how we show up as human beings yep. that make them want to go here. I don't care what it costs, right? Just take my yeah. card. I don't care. I just want to spend time with you. I, yeah. want, I want whatever it is you have. I, I want it because, yeah. because of how you show up and because of how you present yourself and because of the way that you end up relating and communicating mm -hmm. and and being like there's a whole like we could go on yeah. and on and on we could talk for hours here we could we could stream for all day yeah right? we could. i know i'm <laughs> <laughs> just you know even how we carry our bodies and what our bodies are saying emotionally mm -hmm. yeah. to other people um is really what comes into play and seriously like um the people that choose to to hang out with you and, and, and train and coach and mentor with you, um, this comes into play strong. Oh, all the all time. All day long. <laughs> all day long. You know, because um, the reason I gave you the word ironclad trust, because trust is the theme that has been in my life since I was mm. five years old. I lived much of my early days with no one to trust and no one to turn to. And um, and when I was eight years old, I had an opportunity to learn what trust was. And it's kind of a funny story, but I was I was born in Japan and then I was adopted. And um, mm. when I was five is when I learned that my real mother had passed away. Mm. And after that point, I had no reason not to trust everybody in my life. You know, I'm five. Sure. But my. Um, adopted father shortly after I discovered the truth um, began molesting me mm. and my mother later on I discovered was had all the symptoms of a battered woman 
or you know, abused woman. I never saw her actually physically abused, but all the emotional signs were there, which I didn't know when I was a child. So I had no one to protect me. Mm -hmm. But when I was eight years old, I came to the U.S. for the first time, and I began watching the Perry Mason show. Remember the Perry Mason show? I do. Yeah, and I know today it's in color and he's got a beard, but back then he didn't have a beard. <laughs> yeah, it was in black and white. Cover. I know. <laughs> but but think about this. Every week somebody was accused of murder would come to him and say, oh, you're the only one I can turn to. You're the only one I can trust. And to an eight-year-old, I'm watching this week after week. And I go, I trust you, Perry Mason, because he exhibited in that show emotional intelligence. I didn't know that's what it was called back then. I don't even know if anybody knew that's what it was called because it wasn't until the 70s that somebody coined the phrase. But he was so alert and aware and so kind and yet assertive. He had all of those soft skills without sure. me even knowing what they were. And I watched it and I decided I wanted to be Perry Mason. And that's why I became a lawyer. And I became obsessed even going to law school about this trust, like what is trust? What does that mean? And I wanted my clients to trust me the way they trusted Perry Mason yeah. because I knew what it felt like not to have it. And it's a horrible feeling to live a life and not have anyone to turn to. It's scary. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. Nobody. And we are social creatures. We need that human connection. Yeah. You know, and I used to get, I take my ethics course. I used to get answers wrong. I used to, upset me quite a bit um, because I would hold us to a higher standard than the bar required. And I go, <laughs> because in order to get ironclad trust, this is how you should be. That's not good enough. That's not making it. And I would get in arguments with my professor, like, no, 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 this is all that's needed for the rules. Like, well, that's just not good enough. But um, <laughs> so I developed a system when I was a young attorney. I had watched other attorneys, some people developing great trust, some people not, and say, this has to be ironclad trust. And so that's how I got into the notion of that. And as a result of that, in my practice as an attorney, I did things that were emotionally intelligent for my clients mm. without even knowing that such a thing existed. This is, you know, before it became something you hear on the news or in the online we didn't even have the internet at the time. Um, so, um, too. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it became so important. And then it wasn't until later that I saw when I really learned about what emotional intelligence was, I was able to put a label on all the things that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And that's when I saw the connection between real, genuine, emotionally intelligent characteristics and competencies and how important they were in creating that trust with your customers, with your team, yeah. with yourself even. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I know that there is some training that you do in and around this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I do quite a bit, but I've got something to give to everybody today. You do? So I do, I do, I do. I have a little bit of training that I can give to everybody today. And it's a three-step process. Oh. And it actually covers kind of what I went through when I was in that shoot, oh, one thing I didn't tell you, when I was in the shoot, I can go left or right because there are rocks on both sides. So add that to the fear factor. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a skinny little place I had to go down. So, uh, and I brought that story up because it had everything in my life as a skier that would just add fear on top of fear on top of fear, right? Rocks, ice, rocks on both sides, skinny oh my god you can only right. go down you can't go up <laughs> yeah and what i realized is that when if i can use this system this three-step process to get me through that it'll get you through anything mm. right because i mean who has to we don't usually have that kind of fear right. our fear is a lot less than that unless you're actually being chased by a lion in the serengeti you don't experience that level of fear usually <laughs> so <laughs> So yes, and, and I've got my notes here because I want to make sure that we cover this. So basically, um, it's a three-step process. First, I was just going to go through the, identify the three steps first, and then we'll go through each of the steps. So the first thing is when we feel an emotion is we need to freeze the thought that we're having. Okay, so a good example is a, like an ordinary case. Let's say somebody cuts you off um, a driving, right? Somebody cuts you off and you get enraged yeah. well the emotion is enraged so you have to 
try to freeze the thought process. And the thought process at that moment is the guy is trying to kill me, right? That's why you get so angry. That's that road rage thing. He's trying to kill me. And that's the thought process that you have. Boom, he's trying to kill you. It's freezing that thought so you can identify the thought he's trying to kill me with the emotion. The second thing that we do now is we look at that thought and ask ourselves, is there some outside influence or distortion that is influencing our thought so that our thought is he's trying to kill me? And the answer is that thought, there is a distortion, which we're going to get to in a moment. Then once you identify what that distortion is, we clear out the distortion. And then we look at the situation and say, what's the real thought I should have at this point? So in my case of beating that shoot, it was freeze up fear because I'm going to die. And then I went, okay, I'm going to die is a distortion because I'm not going to die. I'm standing here on the top of the hill. I've got all the skills to do exactly this. In fact, the trainer who brought me there, who was a full certified ski instructor and he was training me, knew I had the skills to do this. But I'm going to die was this distortion that was magnified. It was an exaggeration. That's the distortion, yeah. an exaggeration, yeah. right? And once I realized that this is exaggerated idea I had in my head, and I went, okay, I'm going to remove I'm going to die, the exaggeration out of my yeah. mind. Then I was able to say, okay, so what, how do I rephrase my thoughts? Well, I'm going to die is out. So, oh, um, I, I, I can enter and pivot. Okay, that's another thought. I'm not going to die. I am going to enter and pivot. And that whole tactics that I planned that I did, those were the real thoughts that I could rephrase everything is instead of I'm going to die, it became I need to be careful. I need to tap into my skills. I need to make a plan and then execute it. Mm -hmm. Those became my thoughts as opposed to I'm going to die. Yeah. Right. And so. So here's here's the hard, the hardest part of this step is identifying the thought initially, which is, you know, enraged because this guy's trying to kill me when he cuts into me. Well, it's possible that he didn't even see you. Sure, that happens, um, and because people often don't drive defensively, they just don't see. They don't look. They're in their see. blind spot or whatever. Yeah, it could be all sorts of things. All kinds right? of things. Yeah. Right. So instead of that, it might be more useful if you say that's a distortion because that one you're actually reading the guy's mind and none of us have yet learned how to read minds and that's that's a, a distortion so like no one right exactly no one so far right and <coughs> so that's a distortion that you're trying to read this guy's mind that he's trying to kill he doesn't even know you notice i make it a man right i know <laughs> so it's a man <laughs> Clearly. But she doesn't even know you. So she's not trying to kill you. Um, she has, doesn't know you from Adam. She has nothing to do with you. So she's not trying to kill you. So that is a distorted thought. It's an exaggeration. It's mind reading. It's all these things that are distortions. And I'm going to go through 11 distortions that are common. These are like um, patterns that happen in everyday life. And so we get rid of the distortion. Then what happens? The only fact is somebody suddenly got in front of you and startled you. Okay, they may not have seen you. That's true. Mm -hmm. And instead, really what's going on is, I don't like it when people get in front of me when I'm driving. That's really the fact. Yeah. I don't like people in front of me. If we could drive everywhere with nobody in front of us, how sweet would that be? But that's the real rephrased thought. Once you get rid of the distortion that they're trying to kill you because no, they're not because you can't read their mind. They don't even know you. It's, well, what is it that I don't like? I don't like people driving in front of me. I just don't like that. Right. Right. Well, once you do that, boy, that emotion goes from rage to annoyed. Annoyed. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. it's, it's like just now, like that. Yeah. just like that, it goes from rage to annoyed. So now you're not in this crazy emotional state anymore. And then now you can clear that distortion out. You've cleared out the emotion. You've calmed down. And now you've managed your emotion. And you can proceed and make a decision because you're not in that crazy enraged state. You know, I um, I got to write manage down because that's key. Um, these three points right here, 
in deciphering and I'm going to loop this back in and then we're going to, we're going to say thank you for your time. But I think that, um, um, those, these three identifiers, right? Because yeah. so many, so many business owners, CEOs, even employees, right? Like if yeah. you're just an employee, you get irritated with so many things. And if, if you can identify, right. And mm -hmm. it pulls that irritation turns and just keeps creeping up and creeping up and creeping up and creeping up. Right. And now it's, now it's pissed off mad, right? Like yeah, it, yep. in rage, rage with, with a situation that probably wasn't that elevated, but because this little wheel, this hamster wheel, this distortion kept it out of context. <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, really pulls out, um, if if that can be pulled out and separated by these three steps, right? Like identifying that it, yep, it's distorted. Okay, now now that I've realized that this is an exaggerated thought, how am I going to shift, change, tweak, renegotiate, restate it a different way so that I can manage this and not make it such a big deal? Right. Because really, I just want to get out ten minutes early today, right? Like, why why does it have to be a big hairy deal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this goes back to that whole um, life integration thing that we talked about yeah. the last time, the brain bandwidth. Yes. Every time you let these distorted thoughts fill up your brain bandwidth and escalate, which is what we allow it to do, yes. you're sucking away valuable brain power. Yes. And yes. Now you're and back in rush time. hour traffic. Yeah. It's and you're like, wasting oh, time. And your, yeah. your vibration goes in the toilet and like you're mm -hmm. vibrating at this low energy and you're ah, in that yeah. space that nobody likes to be in. And, and sometimes that downward spiral is hard to get out of if you don't have even these basic three steps to yeah. identify it, realize right. it's exaggerated and throw it out and put it in a man, like figure it out, like manage it. Right. And the two biggest ones that I just give you is, you know, the idea that you're trying to mind read mm -hmm. somebody else, which you need to verify. If you have an idea, go verify it. Don't assume you know how to read somebody's right. mind. Right. 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 Um, jumping to conclusions. <sighs> how often do we do that? All the time. All the time. And the things that we do to to um, even sabotage ourselves is sort of like discounting the positive. You know, instead of um, I went to law school. Oh, yep. yeah. oh, you went to law school and you're an attorney. Yeah, yeah, that was so easy. It wasn't easy, but the tendency is to like yeah, discount yeah. it because I did it so it's easy. Like, no, it was hard. I did it. I should elevate myself to, wow, I did it, you know. And, I did it. And people don't do that. Right, right. Yeah, we don't celebrate what we have accomplished. Right. We downplay it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You guys, seriously, this lady is gold right here. I cannot even tell you how much I adore her. She probably and I told her this when she looked back around to wanting to be back on the show again, too. I, I she seriously is probably one of my absolute favorite guests that I've ever had on the show. I adore you. I love what you do. I love where I love the position that you come at. Um, I love the clients that you deal with. I love the you know, that you bring this emotional intelligence into the high level of leadership that you stand for, how you be in the world, how you show up, how you continue to really recreate and make the environment better just by plugging in these little ahas. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, okay, easy. One, two, three, okay, look at that. Oh, and then there's 11 extra things that you can get from Fran when you reach out to her Right, because we got your thing going. Yeah. We had your thing on the screen. Yeah, your Fran Francine Tone dot com. You can go find her all day long. Spend time with Fran. Spend time with Fran. She's brilliant, 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 brilliant. Can people can people come and spend time with you? Absolutely, please do. Yeah, I'm here to help you, and I would love to take your business, no matter how successful or not successful you are. Let's take. Ratchet up a notch here. Few mm. notches. Yeah. Yeah. Implement some of this emotional intelligence and it'll change the trajectory of your business, your your employees, yeah. your communication with your team, your clients, the, what you attract into your world. It'll change almost overnight as soon as you start to implement it. It's crazy. The magnet that's turned on when when you live out of this space 
of, mm-hmm. of recognition. Yeah. I adore yeah. you. Thank you. I adore you too, Aaron. And you know, and one final thing I just want to tell your audience is we throw around the word authenticity a lot. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people use that just to say, well, to trust me, I'm authentic and therefore trust me. Right. The word is meaningless unless you actually show up that way. Thank and you. And this is how you do it. Thank you. I agree a hundred percent with that statement. And, um, um, Actions speak louder than words. That's right. The they time. do. All the time. Yes. All the time. And um, in this digital space, it's even that much more imperative that you get to show up. Yeah. yeah. You get to show up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, so good. So good. So good. I love everything about this topic. I, I just want to talk all day long about it, but we can't. <laughs> We I know, I can talk all day too. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Everybody else, wherever you've been listening from, we so appreciate you. We, I know we're on quite a few different places at the same time. If you're watching the replay, let us know you're watching the replay. If by chance you're watching us or listening to us on our any one of our podcast platforms, thank you so much. We appreciate you. This We have been talking to the amazing Francine Tone. You can find her at francinetone.com. Reach out to her. You can also grab her book, um, The Art of actionbook.com. You can grab her book um, anywhere with that like. So thanks for being with us, Fran. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks.